All right, here we go. Virginia and U.S. SR Review 5. This is the last review that we're going to be doing for the channel. Um, and we're looking at writings, policies, philosophies, and documents. Who do we have here? And why is this document important? It's George Mason. Good job. Why is that document important? the Virginia Declaration of Rights, written by George Mason, important. It influences the Declaration of Rights or the Bill of Rights. Very good. It was the foundation of the Bill of Rights. Excellent. All right. Here we go, guys. What document or compact was drafted by the pilgrims at Plymouth in 1620 to establish a covenant community and to create laws? The Mayflower Compact. Good job. The Mayflower Compact. Awesome. Here we have the Pilgrims and the Strangers, a.k.a. the Anglicans, signing the Mayflower Compact, an early form of a constitution, so to speak, um, in colonial America. What document or proclamation was issued by King George III that said that colonists could not settle west of the Appalachian Mountains after the French and Indian War? mainly a result of Pontiac's war. This was an early cause that would lead to the American Revolution. What is it? Go for it. I forgot. forgot? You guys know this. Proclamation of? Seven, you're close. 1763. 1763. Good. All right, here we go. Everybody needs to take a look up here. There's your map of the proclamation line. And then there's a document of the actual proclamation. Would that be considered a primary or a secondary document? Primary, good job. That is primary. Well done. We know our documents. Awesome. What pamphlet or small book was written by Thomas Paine? in 1775, 1776, that laid out the grievances or problems that the colonists had with George III and Great Britain. This pamphlet inspired Thomas Jefferson when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. Common sense. Common sense, very good. Awesome. Common sense. What document or declaration was written by Thomas Jefferson with the help of a committee that officially declared America's independence from Great Britain on July 4th, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Good job, guys. Woo! Declaration. Here's a couple of the committee members that helped Jefferson. We got John Adams and Ben Franklin. They also received help from Robert Livingston and Roger Sherman. And there's the declaration. What was America's first attempt at a government at the end of the American Revolution? States had too much power, and this form of government was replaced by the Constitution. Remember the, the events of Shays' Rebellion pushed that along as well. It failed due to five major weaknesses. No power to tax. No common currency. No power to regulate trade or commerce. No executive or judicial branch. And only one vote per state despite... Ugh, it's population size. That's the Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation. Very good. Articles. Well done. Made weak on purpose. What document was adopted on September 17, 1787 and established our system of federal government and federalism with shared or concurrent powers with the states? It replaced the Articles of Confederation. Very good. The Constitution. Nice job. We the people. Article 1 grants powers to the legislative branch. Article 2 to the president. Article 3 to the Supreme Court. We have our uh, chairman that presided over the convention, George Washington. 
The plan that was proposed by Virginia Delegate James Madison, father of the Constitution, for a bicameral two-house legislature or legislative branch at the Constitutional Convention in the summer of 1787. The plan was adopted at the convention and led to three co-equal branches of government with checks and balances. Good job! The Virginia plan. Well done. That's a tricky one. All right, now you can speak up. All right, check it out. I got a little breakdown for you here. There's your Virginia plan, your New Jersey plan that got thrown out in the Venn diagram that shows what both plans called for together, and then the Great Compromise that was uh, Roger Sherman's compromise to make a House of Representative based on population, Senate, two senators per state. Cool. What were the first ten amendments attached to the U.S. Constitution to provide Americans with individual rights? They were written by James Madison, known as the con father of the Constitution, in 1789, and attached to the Constitution in 1791. Virginia Declaration of Rights, written by George Mason, and the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, written by Thomas Jefferson, helped inspire the First Amendment and other amendments. Bill of Rights, good job. Here we have a little Bill of Rights breakdown. We got James Madison on the left, Bill of Rights on the top right, and a breakdown of your first 10 amendments of the Constitution. What Virginia document or declaration was drafted or written by George Mason in 1776 to proclaim, sorry, the inherent rights of men including the right to reform or abolish inadequate government. It became the foundation and inspiration when James Madison authored the Bill of Rights. Virginia Declaration of Rights. Very good. Y'all are doing great today. Um, all right, so here we have George Mason on the left, Virginia Declaration of Rights on the right. Got to nail that one down. What Virginia document or statute was drafted or written by Thomas Jefferson in 1777-1779 to provide for religious freedom in Virginia and bring about an end to an established church in the Commonwealth of Virginia. This statute inspired part of the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. You guys are all right saying it at different times. It is the Virginia statute for religious freedom. Well done. Nice job, y'all. What 1794-1795 Trade and Commerce Treaty was established by John Jay of New York to establish favorable international trade terms with Great Britain after the American Revolution? Federalists, led by Alexander Hamilton and John Adams, liked the International Trade Treaty with England, but Democratic Republicans, led by Jefferson and Madison, hated this international treaty. Jay's Treaty, good job. Jay's Treaty, or just Jay Treaty. Well done. There's John Jay on the left, the treaty on the right. Ultimately, this treaty falls apart because we end up in the War of 1812 against Britain over free trade rights and impressment of sailors. Good job. What address or doctrine was given by James Monroe in 1823 to inform European nations that the U.S. would no longer allow for European invasion or colonization in the Americas or Western Hemisphere. The doctrine told European nations to stay out of American affairs because nations in the Western Hemisphere were republics by nature. In turn, America would stay out of European affairs. Well done. The Monroe Doctrine, 1823. Uh, it's kind of tough. We got James Monroe's head covered here. Let's pull this to the side. Boop. All right. And there's an image of the Monroe Doctrine being presented. And then down here, whoops. Then down here we got 
uh, political cartoon, one on the left, one on the right, related to the Monroe Doctrine. What compromise passed in 1820 made Missouri a slave state and Maine a free state while splitting the free slave territory in two along the 36 degree parallel latitude line. Henry Clay brokered the compromise to keep the free slave state balance and he got the nickname the Great Compromiser. Good job. Missouri Compromise. Well done guys. We see that all divided. This is a great map related to the Missouri Compromise making Missouri a slave state, Maine a free state, and then that 36 degree parallel line dividing the free and slave territory. There's Henry Clay pictured, or not pictured, but painted on the top left. What compromise was brokered by Henry Clay in 1850 to make California a free state and allow for the popular sovereignty in New Mexico and the Utah territories? It outlawed the slave trade in D.C., etc., the border of Texas, and allowed for the passage of the Controversial Fugitive Slave Act. It was an attempt to keep the free slave state balance, but just kept just one step closer to civil war. Good job. <laughs> the Compromise of 1850. This is a great map. It lays out, we got Henry Clay again. This is his last compromise just before he passes away. California comes in as a free state. They said, hey, United States, you got to build us a what? To get people here. One of the conditions for California coming in to this, as remember, California was its own country for a little while. But they said, okay, we'll come in as a free state as long as you build us a, a wall? No, not a wall. Why would California want a wall? They want people to get there. A bridge? It's a long bridge. A river? Can't, can't build rivers. You can build canals. Okay. Okay. There's also trails. But what mode of transportation is being used by 1850? Trains. Very good. They want a transcontinental railroad. If you set it up front. Sorry, we didn't hear you. They want a transcontinental railroad. So that is going to be delayed because of what will ultimately happen. What happens after the Compromise of 1850 that delays the building of the Transcontinental Railroad? Civil what? The Civil War. The Civil War. Very good. Okay, in this area, popular sovereignty in these territories, all right? Slave trade is outlawed in D.C. The border between Mexico, New Mexico, and Texas. And then the Fugitive Slave Act, Super Racist Act, it paid judges more money to send slaves back south or even freed men to the south and freed women to the south who had papers and were legally free. All right, what was the act that was brokered by Stephen Douglas to allow for popular sovereignty, meaning that people could vote to become a free or a slave state in Kansas and Nebraska territory? This act led to a violent border war on the border of Kansas and Missouri, known as Bleeding Kansas, over the issue of slavery and popular sovereignty. This was one step closer to civil war. Kansas and Nebraska Act. Nice job. Kansas and Nebraska Act. Here we have an image of Stephen Douglas, the little giant. And all this territory in orange is up for popular sovereignty. The green territory, or the green states are free, or free territory, everything in blue, a slave. What was the name of the anti-slavery abolitionist? The Liberator. Abolitionist newspaper that was published by William Lloyd Garrison. The paper was first published in 1831 and mostly circulated in the northern, in the north because southern states banned the newspaper. Liberator. Nice job. William Lloyd Garrison and the Liberator. What was the 1848 declaration made by women's rights leaders? 
the suffragists in Seneca Falls, New York. The suffragist meeting was a call for women's voting and individual rights, but women could not get the right to vote until 1920 with the passage of the 19th Amendment. The meeting was co-founded by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott. Seneca Falls Declaration. Declaration. <laughs> You're right. The Seneca Falls Declaration of Sentiments or the Seneca Falls Convention. Very good. Here on the left, we have a young Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And here on the right, we have Lucretia Mott giving the Seneca Falls Declaration of Sentiments. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal the Civil War is going to put the brakes on the, civil, uh, the suffragette movement as well. What controversial Supreme Court decision in 1857 ruled that Dred Scott was not a free man, there was no free territory, and that African Americans did not have the right to trial in a court of law? It was one step closer to being a Civil War. Dred Scott decision. Good job. Scott v. Sanford or the Dred Scott decision. I have a pretty good feeling you'll see this one. What best-selling novel was written by Harriet Beecher Stowe that dealt with the brutality of the life of a slave in the American South? Uncle Tom's Cabin. Well done. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Here we have Harriet Beecher Stowe on the left and Uncle Tom's Cabin for sale on the right. What proclamation was issued by Abraham Lincoln on February 1st, 1863 that stated all slaves in rebel states or Confederate states would be considered free? Slaves in border states were not free. This proclamation was a Northern or Union war aim to enlist African Americans and to keep foreign countries out of the war on the side of the Confederate states. Good job. Emancipation Proclamation issued after what battle, the single bloodiest day of the war that occurred in Maryland? It's, we call it, name it after the creek. Gettysburg. No. Nope. Gettysburg's the turning point of the war. And this is issued on January 1st, 1863. Gettysburg happens on July 1st through 3rd, 1863. Antietam, very good. It is the Battle of Antietam that inspires Abraham Lincoln to move forward with this. They had already been talking about doing this. All right. What famous speech was given by Abraham Lincoln on November 19th, 1863 to commemorate the cemetery for fallen, killed in action at the Battle of Gettysburg, which had been fought in July? He said the Civil War was the second... American Revolution was a war being fought to preserve the union of the people by the people for the people. Gettysburg Address. Very good. Okay, Gettysburg Address. All right. What compromise ended the union military occupation? of the South allowed for the passage of Jim Crow laws and officially ended Reconstruction in the American South. This compromise allowed for Rutherford B. Hayes to be elected president, but it tipped, but it ripped away the rights that African Americans had gained after the Civil War. Compromise of 1877. Good. Compromise of 1877. This pushes forth the Jim Crow laws and ends about ends the military occupation of the South. This is a famous political cartoon from Thomas Nast. We saw a lot of his cartoons earlier this year with Boss Tweed and the KKK. Um, the first KKK. Nast was a, uh, a journalist and cartoonist and basically what he's saying here is that the compromise of 1877 is a compromise for the South. It basically reinstitutes the old Confederates back to control of the southern states. The, the U.S. flag is flying upside down as a sign of what? Close. Distress. And here the wounded Union 
soldier and Lady Liberty are crying over the grave of those lost in the war, African Americans back in bondage in the South burning in the background. What law or act was passed in 1862 to allow settlers to gain land in the West at extremely cheap prices? Settlers could buy land for $1.25 an acre, but they had to build and farm on the land that they bought from the government. Homestead Act of 1862. Nice job, guys. Homestead Act of 1862. On the left, we've got a flyer um, to promote the sale of these acres of land. And on the right, we've got a homestead family standing next to their Conestoga wagon, the minivan of the era. What law or act limited the immigration of the Chinese after the transcontinental railroad lines were completed in the early 1880s? Chinese Exclusion Act. What year? Good job. Chinese Exclusion Act, 1882. Great guess. Well done. What law or act was passed after World War I to limit European immigration in 1921? This act was passed out of a fear that communism would spread to the United States and was commonly known as the 3% Quota Act. Well done. Immigration Restriction Act, 1921. What group do we talk about in Europe that suffered greatly from this act at the start of World War II? Who? The Jewish settlers, or sorry, Jewish immigrants trying to settle in America. They were turned away and sent back to Europe and into the hands of Nazis. What set of laws that vary from state to state allowed for African Americans to be segregated in all public and private facilities? These laws were upheld by the Supreme Court decision, Plessy v. Ferguson, stating that separate but equal did not violate the 14th Amendment for 58 years. The services were separate, but they certainly were not equal. This was reversed. It was not reversed until Brown v. Board. Good job, Jim Crow. So everything from restrooms to water fountains were separated. Is Jim Crow a real person? Nope, just a character. Jim Crow is a character. A farce of the liberties that were taken away from African Americans. What was the Progressive Era policy or deal for consumers, labor, conservation, and corporations issued by Teddy Roosevelt in the early 1900s? It was also used to bust up monopolies and large trusts. Square deal. Square deal. Good Woo! job. A square deal. Justly popular. Well, depends on who you were. <laughs> if you were J.P. Morgan, it was not justly popular. <laughs> what progressive era was progressive era plan was established by Winsor Wilson from 1913 to 16 to establish the Federal Reserve and the cruelty of child labor, which was brought about the establishment of the child, Children's Bureau, and created the anti, the Clayton Antitrust Act to outlaw price fiction to shore up the loopholes in the Sherman Antitrust Act. New freedom. Good job. The new freedom. We're gonna pass. I hope. Sounds, you guys nailing it down here. It takes time to remove the grime. That was a quote from Wilson. His campaign slogan was new freedom. What antitrust act was established in 1890 to bust trusts and monopolies at the turn of the century during the second industrial revolution? The main problem was that there were too many loopholes in the act. A lot of bark with a little bite. Sure, man, Good job. Woo! 
The Sherman Antitrust Act end monopolies. When the Antitrust Act was passed in 1914 to shore up the loopholes in Sherman's in Sherman and outlaw price fixing, it was part of Woodrow Wilson's progressive era new freedom plan. The Antitrust Which one? Clayton. Clayton. Clayton Antitrust Act. This is an awesome political cartoon of Woodrow Wilson harpooning the the Kraken. Yeah. The Kraken of Trust. American. That for that section. But you do need to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Is that so? Think Pearl Harbor there. Good. All right. Back to it. That is such an awesome political cartoon. All right. Is it my turn? Yep. All right. What policy was enacted by Secretary of State John Hay between 1898 and 1900 to open up trading rights with China? Hey, China, open doors for trade. Open door policy. Open door policy. Nice job. Open door. Got a couple of things here. We got John Hay on the left and an open door policy cartoon on the right. What policy or, di or diplomacy was established by President William Howard Taft to encourage U.S. banks and U.S. businesses to invest in, to invest, build, and expand in Latin America? The completion of the Panama Canal helped drive this diplomacy. Dollar diplomacy. Nice job. Dollar diplomacy. Here we have William Howard, a cartoon of William Howard Taft. What was President Woodrow Wilson's overall peace plan to end World War I? The plan included freedom of the seas, self-determination for independent nations, the mandate system for remaining colonies, and the League of Nations to keep the peace. Good job. 14 points. Can he produce the harmony? That's the orchestra is made up of what? Foreign countries. All right. What what was the treaty that ended World War One in nineteen nineteen? It forced Germany to take responsibility for the war and pay billions of reparations. Treaty of Versailles. Nice. Treaty of Versailles. Here we have Woodrow Wilson and the other leaders of the European nations at the Versailles Treaty jamming the peace terms down Germany's throat. You've got to swallow swallow it whether you like it or not. Peace terms. It is. It's funny, but it also brings about the tension that will lead to what? World War II and the rise of Hitler and the Nazis. Good job. Is this me? Yep. All right. What was the tariff act that was passed after the stock market crashed in 1929? It was a retaliatory tariff against foreign nations that placed a tariff on thousands of goods in like double digits of thousands of goods. It crippled global trade and pushed the nation and the world farther into the Great Depression. Good, also known as, it actually just made its way into the newspaper this past weekend because it is kind of a lot of the, the recklessness of this policy is being attached to um, one of the presidential candidates. I, I, I don't care about the candidate that it was attached to. What I care about is what it's called. I do care about it, but not right now. 
We'll talk more about that later. The Tariff Act of 1930 was proposed by two men, Willis C. and Reed. Their last names are Holly and Smoot. Thank you. The Tariff Act of 1930. Willis C. Holly and Reed Smoot. That's who the tariff is named after. Can you see that? Look at that. That's what the Holly Smoot Tariff did. That might be a fun roller coaster ride, but certainly not a fun decline in international and global trade. Things literally grinded to a standstill in terms of global trade as a result of this. Okay. What, what was President Franklin D. Roosevelt's deal to attempt to pull the country out of the Great Depression? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Was his first inaugural address? His deal was controversial because some programs worked and some did not, and some were even found unconstitutional. New deal. New deal. Good job. It is the New Deal. For a New Deal, there comes a New Deal. All right. What New Deal relief program was a massive jobs program that put thousands of people to work building roads, bridges, and infrastructure during the Great Depression? Nope. It does start with a W, and it does end with an A. WPA, Works Progress Administration. Um, the, oh no! What I, I thought I'd finish that one. What new deal? What new deal? And I'll finish typing it. I'm going to do that right now. Let's do it now. You guys can. Okay. What new deal program? Paid farmers to rotate their crops and instituted a farm holiday. It was later found unconstitutional. Okay, here we go. What New Deal program paid farmers to rotate their crops, limit surpluses, and instituted a farm holiday? It was later found unconstitutional. AAA, Agricultural Adjustment Administration. Glad we were able to find that mistake. unsound banking and ensure the deposits of investors and customers. It still protects U.S. bank investments. Federal Deposit UIC. Good. Federal Deposit Insurance Close Corporation. Well done. Don't put your money in, in a bank that doesn't have that sticker on the window. What New Deal program provided retirement money and protection for widowed women and children? A general welfare program. It's still around and still controversial. Very good. Social Security Act. Hey, Mr. Dean, what's the Social Security Act? USSA. In reference to what, though? Will you look it up after we're done here? Works for me. What program did FDR initiate to help provide military supplies to Great Britain the start of, at the start of the World War II in exchange for military bases in Bermuda and the Caribbean? Very good. Nice job. 
He compared it to lending a neighbor a garden hose if their house was on fire. His critics, like Gerald Nye said, it's not like lending a neighbor a garden hose. It's like lending a neighbor a piece of what? Bubble gum. Good job. You don't want a bag after it's been chewed up. <laughs> what convention met in Switzerland to determine the humane treatment? Fix that. The humane treatment of prisoners of war in international combat, it was not followed in Japan during World War II. Good job. The Geneva, Geneva Convention, a.k.a. the Geneva Accords. Hang tight. Hang tight on that. Hang tight on that. We're almost done here. What was the plan to help rebuild Europe after World War II? Countries that received U.S. aid had to become democratic and capitalist trade partners with the U.S. Name for the man that came up with the plan at the end of World War II. Oh. Uh, said that. Marshall Plan, good job. Why are we not going to miss that one? Where'd Marshall go to college? That's right. Mr. E's alma mater. VMI, good job. There's like a whole museum dedicated to him and the Marshall Plan in Lexington. All right, what was the anti-communist doctrine that, was, that the U.S. established in the Cold War? Not to roll communism back from where it was, but to prevent it from spreading. This doctrine was named for a U.S. president just after World War II and at the start of the Cold War. Who's our president at the end of World War II and at the start of the Cold War? You do. You guys know it? He drops the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Truman. Truman, good job. The Truman Doctrine. The guy that really wrote this was George F. Kennan. What, what international nuclear deal was established by Dwight D. Eisenhower that stated that the U.S. would retaliate against the Soviets if they fired nuclear weapons? You fire one, we'll fire a hundred. What's in what's in quotation? Retaliate. Good job. Massive retaliation. There's President Eisenhower. What was Nixon's plan to bring an honorable end to the Vietnam War by having the U.S. train the troops in South Vietnam and to withdraw? Good job. Did it work? No. It did not. South Vietnam fell to North Vietnam in 1975. What Civil Rights Act did Linda B. Johnson sign, Linda B. Johnson sign in the law to desegre desegregate all public and most private facilities and services? Civil Rights Act of 1964. Nice. Civil Rights Act of 1964. Here's LBJ signing in into law. Dr. King in the background. What was the Civil Rights Act that outlawed literacy tests and increased African American voter registration? and participation, also signed into law by Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ. Good job. Voting Rights Act of? Good job, 65. Here we have LBJ shaking hands with Dr. King. What was the conservative revolution of the 1980s that pushed for tax cuts, cuts in spending, and cuts in the program? This was also an error of finding justices for the Supreme Court that used judicial restraint like Chief Justice William Rehnquist. This revolution was also was also about supply side economics known as Reaganomics. Reagan, Reagan, Reagan revolution. revolution. The Reagan revolution. He's not the first person to have said that, trust me. 
A similar quote date goes all the way back to the argument between the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. A similar quote was said by George Mason. What Congressional Act was signed into law by George W. Bush following the events of September 11, 2001? It created the Department of Homeland Security and increased the role of the National Security Agency. Patriot Act. Here's Bush signing into law. Remember, it is also very controversial. There's a political cartoon for the Patriot Act renewal. It's a critical cartoon of the Patriot Act renewal. All right, guys, really appreciate the help there. Um, let's pull this. Yeah, anytime.